what about um, private uh, instance uh, methods and uh, private instance fields? Um, uh, what about accessing those from a uh, static method member class? Well, um, of course, you can't access some um, instance fields or methods um, in the uh, top level class um, or enclosing class directly from a, um, uh, a static member class. Um, but you can do if you've got a reference um, to an object of that class. And uh, where this occurs, of course, the um, compiler is going to have to provide access methods. Uh, that is if the field is um, private or the method's private. Um, uh, furthermore, this access method is going to need to take a parameter which is a reference to an instance of the um, top level class or whatever the class is that's got the uh, the uh, uh, member that you want to access in. So here's an example here. Uh, this class outer and um, got this static member class there. And uh, that just calls um, M because it's supplied with a reference to um, an instance of outer. So it just calls M which happens to be private and it can do that and uh, it sets um, I which is also private to a 90 99. So we're going to have to put access methods into outer, and uh, this is what happens. Here's the um, outer dot inner test there takes the outer, and uh, the first thing it does is um, call outer dot access dollar zero zero zero, which um, passes in O, and uh, that basically just calls M like that. Now um, I notice I've had to use underscore one here. Um, now to describe what happens in Java terms basically I've got to invent some names for parameters and the ones I invent are going to start with underscore. The ones the compiler invents uh, contain dollar at some point. So that's one I've had to make up. Obviously the compiler doesn't need that because all it does is just pop it off the stack. It doesn't need to have a name for it. But to explain it in, in Java terms, I've got to invent something to describe it. So I've just chosen them to start with underscore. Um, and now if we look at the second thing here, which is uh, that, it passes um, the outer reference as before and uh, 99, which you can see, and it uh, causes it to be set just like that. It's quite straightforward. Um, you'll notice that uh, these numbers are different and we come to how they're computed soon. Um, uh, well yeah, perhaps I should mention that um, uh, this is how it is done by the uh, Java reference compiler produced by Sun, but um, uh, some of this is not specified in the language. so. It could be done a bit differently in theory, but I think you'll find most of them do it this way. If there's going to be any difference, it will be perhaps these numbers might be computed and set up differently. But I'll, yeah, I'll discuss what these numbers are soon. And now some uh, general remarks about um, access methods. So, first of all, if you're trying to access um, a private method and that uh, private method throws an exception, then the access method will have to do the same thing and um, the compiler will um, do that for you. It will indicate that it also throws the same exception. Now um, the number which follows the dollar. Now um, that's down to the implementation as I said but um, uh, for the reference compiler uh, what happens is this. Um, uh, the number when you divide it by 100 determines the um, uh, the variable, that's the um, field or the method um, that you're trying to access or modify whatever. and uh, mod 100 it determines the type of modification that you're doing and um, a simple read in the case of fields or a simple sort of invocation in the case of methods uh, the number is 0. Um, assignment is 2 and um, pre-increment, um, 
pre-decrement is 4 and 6 respectively and post-increment post-decrement is 8 and 10 and other values depend on the type of the variables starting with um, the um, integer plus equals plus and becomes of which is 12 and it ends with that um, well known useful um, operator which is um, uh, long um, What's that? That's um, right shift with zero insert and becomes with a long shift, which is 96. Um, access methods are always static. And um, you'll notice that the numbers, they're all even. And later you'll see um, odd numbers used, but uh, that's for a different sort of nested class. Now, um, you might wonder why it's got so many methods why you can't just use um, a simple read and a simple write simple assignment as it were for all, all these fields and things um, and the answer is um, I think it's probably um, something to do with synchronization and uh, multitasking and where you may have more than one processor trying to access the same thing remember these are these things are all private fields so the class has got these private fields in, really it's got a right to expect that it's got control over them. Uh, so uh, synchronization, as it were, is not an issue. You haven't got an issue with multiple uh, processes or trying to access the same field and modifying it. Okay. Now, what might happen, of course, is that the inner class is doing the access. If that's running on one process, processor, and... Um, uh, the instance of the class is on another processor or something you can see that you make it a conflict when both trying to access it if he was to do it by, uh, by a method to sort of read it um, do your modification to it and write it back again uh, you sort of mean between reading it um, the, the, the um, class itself may modify that field and then when you come to write it back, you're overwrite, but it's modified. So you get a sort of conflict going on. Uh, that's why if it's if that modification is all entirely carried out in the in the um, in in the class or in one go, that then you haven't got that problem. Okay, that, that's that's probably my guess as to why it's doing that. I'm fairly sure that's probably something like that. Well, let's have a look at that in uh, action. Here's uh, is the uh, class E here which extends that uh, exception there and we define this class here to uh, this uh, method rather here to to throw that exception and uh, here's a few there's a little bit of code in there which uh, just plays around with uh, in this inner class here just plays around with this uh, I and M both which are of course private question is what happens to that How's it transformed by the compiler? And um, this is what it looks like. Essentially, it's, it's this. Um, there's various access methods here. You'll notice they're all static. And the um, inner class gets to transformed to this. And uh, what we've got here is uh, this lump of code there. Right, if you take a look at this, uh, this uh, 96 here passes in reference to outer and 1, 2, 3, 4. And number there's 96. And if you look at what that does, it um, returns this uh, uh, first parameter, which is outer.i, um, right shifted with zero insert and assign uh, to the uh, second parameter, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is exactly that and then we add on to that this thing there which is 4 and there's 4 there which just takes the first entry which is going to be outer and it adds um, auto increments and returns um, i which we can do of course and uh, then we so having added those two things together, we then want to assign it to i, which we do there with 2, 2 
that's the first value and that's the value you want to assign there and um, that is just stored like that uh, similarly this uh, access 100o is simply going to call um, let's call that m there using the reference to the first parameter of course and of course that's got to throw e and uh, up here of course we've uh, not bothered with catching the thing so we just have to declare it as being thrown again and uh, that's basically how it is uh, transformed